Hello everyone. Today I wanted to do a couple of practice problems involving acids, bases, and pH calculations to make sure that we all understand this topic. Okay. So whenever we talk about acids and bases, we're really talking about two ions, hydronium ions, H3O plus, and hydroxide ions, OH minus. Hydronium ions come from acids and we can't find hydronium just on the shelf in the chem lab, but we can find acids, okay? And the amount of hydronium ions that we would have in a solution, is gonna be equal to the number of moles of strong acid we use, okay? So they, strong acids form hydronium in a one-to-one -one ratio. One molar HCl would form one molar hydronium, okay? Similarly, we don't have hydroxide ions in bottles, but we have salts containing them. Um, many salts contain one mole of hydroxide per one mole of salt. For example, NaOH, KOH, so are very common examples of ones that ha have just one mole of hydroxide each. There are some that have two, like barium hydroxide or strontium hydroxide. You might see why. When you look at the formula, right, the number of hydroxide ions in those is two because those are group two metals. So that would be, for example, barium has two OH minus per salt molecule, well, per formula unit. Okay, so you want to use your, um, your best judgment. I, I didn't write every single one here. Um, but if you saw a salt that has one hydroxide, assume that it's going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, so we don't often talk though about just the concentrations. We often use terms like pH. Um, so when we see pH, pH is a measure of hydronium ions, but it is a logarithmic measure, meaning it function, it's a function of powers of 10. Okay. So pH is negative log of H3O plus. Another term we could use is pOH. When you put P in front of something, it means that we're switching it to a negative log scale. Okay, so pOH is negative log of OH minus. Move that down a little bit. Okay, we have a couple equations that go with these. Okay, if I wanted to solve for the reverse, H3O plus, okay, to undo a log function, we raise both sides to the power of 10. Okay, so H3O plus is 10 to the minus pH. And similarly, OH minus is 10 to the minus pOH. Okay, we're just about done with equations. OH minus and H3O plus, they always exist in solution. You can't have one without the other um, in an aqueous solution, but they do exist in equilibrium, which means the products of their concentrations must add up to a constant, or not add up, must multiply to a constant. In this case, the constant for water, equilibrium constant for water here is 10 to the minus 14. And this expression could actually be rearranged if we took the negative log of both sides. I'm not gonna get into the math here, but taking the negative log of both sides of this expression gives you this. pH plus pOH equals 10 to, or equals 14. Okay, so we've got three um, sets of expressions here. So what I wanna look at is the variables in each expression. Because when we're solving a problem, we're often, uh, asked to solve for a specific variable while being given other variables. Okay, so our first set of expressions contain the variables hydronium concentration and pH. Okay, so I would want to use those equations if I want to interchange or solve for the one of those two while knowing the other. Next one is OH minus. And pOH. And the third set 
These actually have all four variables in them, depending on which one you use. So these are used to sort of bridge the gap between hydronium and hydroxide. Okay, so I could use that first one if I know the concentrations of each. I could use the second equation if I know pH or pOH. Okay, so there you have our equations. I want you to write those down, keep them somewhere handy. Let's see if we can use some of these to solve a problem where we're asked to solve for all of those variables. Okay, so the question says, find the hydronium concentration, hydroxide concentration, pH and pOH for a 0.15 molar HCl solution. Okay, um, so first thing I note, this is an acid, and it's a strong acid. Okay, so concentration of hydronium is equal to the concentration of the acid. Okay, so that's what we're given in this problem. Okay, so let's look at what we, I'm just gonna check that one off. Let's look at what we need to find then. We wanna find hydroxide, pH, and pOH. We can pretty much go in any order we want because we've got a bunch of equations, but we wanna use an equation that has hydronium in it. So I see I could use this equation to solve for hydroxide, or I could use this top equation to solve for pH. Um, right, so let's do the top one first. Okay, pH is negative log of, hydro of hydronium or negative log 0.15. Okay, so that's going to give us our pH for this expression. Okay negative log of 0 0.15, 0 0.82. Okay, next I'm going to use this expression. Knowing hydronium, I can find OH minus. OH minus, I'm going to re rearrange it to solve for OH minus, so it comes out to be 10 to the four, minus 14 over hydronium. Okay. Or 6.7 times 10 to the minus 14. All right. We we're asked to find pOH as our last um, request. pOH, I could use either one of these expressions. Um, I'm going to use this bottom one because I don't need the calculator to do it. pOH is 14 minus pH or 13.18. Okay, um, I could have used the top expression and done uh, negative log of OH minus as well. Okay, but like I said, we need to calculate it for that one. Um, but you've got so many expressions to use. The key here is you just want to look at what variable do I know? In this problem, we were given hydronium ions in the problem. So I can solve first for pH or OH minus. Once I know pH or OH minus, I can really use the rest of the expressions. Um, okay. So let's try one more. I'm gonna keep the expressions hidden. I encourage you to try this one on your own before I jump into it. Let's find the pOH and pH of a two molar NaOH solution. Okay, um, so we've got two molar NaOH. This is a base, and this is a base that contains one mole of, hydro of uh, hydroxide so this is going to be also two molar uh, OH minus. Okay, and that's concentration. All right, so jumping back to our expressions, we can use any of our expressions that require us to know OH minus. That would be this one or this one, okay, which, this problem is asking me to solve for pOH, so I'm going to use this 
this one that solves for POH. And that asks for negative log or POH is negative log of two. or zero, negative 0 0.3, okay, oh, three zero. Okay, so that's my POH. Next, now that I know POH, I can use my expression that pH plus POH equals 14. So pH must equal 14.3, okay. So there you have it. Um, basically, we're just using those equations, but when we have so many equations, it's important to recognize which ones we can start with. And to do that, I highly suggest marking up your equations list with a list of the, the variables in each expression. Because there are only two variables in each expression, you really can use any of them as long as you know one of the two variables. Um, so I think that makes these a lot uh, easier to use than equations like PV equals NRT, where you would need to know, you know, three of the four variables. Um, but we do have more equations to work with, and that, that can be challenging. All right. I mean, if you have any questions on Google Classroom or via email, have a good one.